Guten Tag. Hello. Bonjour. Welcome to this fourth conversation between the German National Library and Library and Archives Canada. My name is Francesco Manganiello from Library and Archives Canada, and I'll be your moderator for this discussion. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you on the traditional, unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. I'm aware that we're all living and working on different Indigenous territories and homelands, and I encourage you to take the time to think about the privilege of where we live, work, and play. Thank you. Well, this time last year, the German National Library and Library Archives Canada started a four-part conversation series that explored the effects of digitization on the national documentary heritage institutions and included topics on digital access and participation, web harvesting, and participation. I'm happy to be with you today on our fourth and final discussion as we will explore innovation and collaboration with the national institution perspective with our two guest speakers before you. From Germany, we have Frank Schulze, who's the Director General of the German National Library. Hello, Frank. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. And from Canada, we have Leslie Weir, Librarian Archivist of Canada at Library and Archives Canada. Hi, Leslie. Hi there, thrilled to be here too. So before we start to get into discussion, we sort of provided an overview that um, it's, it's quite obvious that we're in a period of considerable change due to the impacts of the ongoing pandemic and other ongoing factors that we've explored throughout the year together. And this has led to some challenges for both organizations, but also some great innovations and opportunities. So why don't we explore some opportunities and predictions perhaps on what the future may hold? So Frank, question number one, what predictions do you have for the German National Library in the next five years and what opportunities do you foresee on the horizon? Well, uh, the pandemic amplified and accelerated digital developments and transformation. And I really hope that you will keep the positive aspects of that without the fear and anxiety that a pandemic had. And my main hope is that we will keep uh, the mental attitude that change is constant and that we can shape it together. Um, the German National Library will be much more digital in many ways in the future. Uh, for example, with regard to its collections, we just celebrated um, 10 million digital media items out of our total 42 mi million. And this current ratio that one out of four media items is digital will shift towards one out of three in the next years. Um, it will be much more digital with regard to workflows and processes, internal but also external, with an ever-increasing variety of users. So we will have uh, a big digital change, and I think that holds a lot of opportunities for us as well. Thank you, Frank. And Leslie, from your perspective, uh, what predictions do you have for LEC or Library and Archives Canada over the next uh, five years, and what opportunities do you think will come forth? Thank you, Francesco. Like Francesco, I am speaking to you from the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Do you know, in the next five years, we actually have two building uh, uh, projects that are gonna be coming to fruition. So it'll be very exciting with the uh, opening of Adesoke, which is a name gifted to us by the Algonquin Anishinaabe people, uh, which means storytelling which is the name of our new joint facility with the Ottawa Public Library, which is under construction in the heart of the national capital. And the second building project is our new state-of-the-art Gatineau Preservation Center, uh, which is um, going to be host, uh, hosting even more of our uh, collections. And these two buildings will provide much greater access to our collections to a much wider audience. I also hope, like Frank, that in five years, the COVID pandemic will be a distant memory. Um, but I have to acknowledge that the lockdowns have really forced us to adapt quickly and become nimble and embrace digital tools. And I really hope that that will continue, uh, that, that creativity, that innovation, as we implement not only the workplace of the future, but also the National Library of the future with a much greater digital presence. And I'm actually speechless when I hear about the amount of uh, German National Library collections that are available digitally. And I think we can only hope uh, in the next five years uh, to try to match uh, the great achievements that you've made. 
Yeah, thanks, Leslie. And hearing both uh, you and Frank talk about you know change being constant and the opportunities that sort of come forth through change is, is paramount. And I think it dovetails nicely to our next question about you know that we work with the public to make our access our collections more accessible. So, Frank, in building on you know your activities as digitizing your items, I'm wondering how do you expect public interaction will change with your collections in the next few years in light of your activities uh, that you mentioned earlier? Yeah, well, the fact that the collections become much more digital, um, makes the analog objects neither obsolete nor less valuable, but rather enables their use in all facets and makes real participation of the different communities or of the public to work with these objects possible. Because only if you compile new collections, it will be possible for the public or for communities to address new questions with methods of text and data mining or machine learning in order to gain new knowledge. And this knowledge can and should flow back into our collections, provided that they have the corresponding openness, which is a challenge for us, of course. As there will be, at least in Germany, uh, continue to be copyright restrictions, our users still will have to visit the library if they want to access and work with all the collections. So this is why we're currently developing this concept of our digital reading rooms as library impact hubs, which are very much based on co-learning, co-working, co-creation. Um, library stands for the digital collections. Hub stands for analyzing, sharing, processing these collections across institutions and disciplines. And impact stands for discussing and answering important questions for society based on this analysis, basically. No, thank you, Frank. And it builds upon your first response and talking about that, you know, doing this together in all aspects of, of your work with your users. And I'm wondering, Leslie, uh, with, from your perspective with Library and Archives Canada, how, how do you foresee sort of the public interacting with our collections over the years and in light of having more of a focus on the user and, our, and greater visibility of our collections? Well, I think with the opening of Adesoke, um, having our flagship services um, in the same physical space as a public library will really change the way we think about the user experience and how we actually engage with the public. It'll mean a much greater visibility for Libraries and Archives Canada and our collections. And it'll create a chance uh, for us to reach uh, sort of less traditional audiences, um, not only in the national capital region, but across Canada, because of course we'll need to expand our online tools. And that means making those collections accessible, not only across Canada, but around the world. And we would hope as well to have more people contributing uh, to our collections via crowdsourcing tools, uh, such as, as CoLab that we have at, at Library and Archives Canada. I think what the pandemic showed us as well is that there is a benefit for public programming that includes a mix of online and in-person components. Uh, and it's been demonstrated that with virtual events, you can create opportunities that wouldn't exist otherwise. And I think this panel is a great, uh, the series of panels that we're doing is a great example of that. Thanks, Leslie. I couldn't say it, uh, anything better myself. And it goes nicely to our next question about collaboration. It's very evident, Frank and Leslie, uh, you know, we're in this together. So I'm wondering, Frank, if you could give us a little bit more information or, or more insight in terms of what collaboration opportunities you foresee in the future in your experiences so far. Yeah, apart from this great uh, collaboration with Library and Archives of Canada, I think um, Europeana and the German Digital Library are, as I'd say, our role models uh, that show the way uh, to the digital future. They're bringing together the net and networking the holding of cultural and scientific institutions, which is already uh, a huge technological and organizational task, which we're facing as a community together. Um, and I think collaboration is absolutely necessary in these times of digitization where complexity and volatility increase so much. And I think this is why, in our opinion, um, collaboration between culture and research institutions will, and the public will become broader and deeper, resulting in much more shared infrastructures and tools. Uh, the role that we see as a German National Library in this is to be a vital hub in these networks and to organize and moderate 
cooperation and communication. For example, we have just coordinated the federal government's new strategy paper called Cultures in Digital Change. And this paper sets out the priorities for the further digital transformation in the public cultural sector in Germany in the next few years. So I think um, it will go very much along this collaboration lines. Thank you, Frank. And Leslie, from your perspective, this transformation through collaboration, I was wondering if you could provide your insights in terms of uh, collaboration opportunities going forward. Well, like Frank, I, I think it's extremely important that uh, national libraries are part of a national strategy uh, that can also link uh, into an international network. So Libraries and Archives Canada works very closely with the National Heritage Digitization Initiative and as well um, with the other parts of the so-called GLAM sector, the galleries, libraries, archives, and museums in Canada. And we are really focusing on uh, the digital sort of reality in the country and also uh, trying to ensure that people within Canada actually have access because Canada is a very large country and not everywhere in Canada actually has access to, to, to uh, bandwidth that allows them to actively participate. At the same time, Canada is a very multicultural country and we really need to ensure that our collections are relevant and that they reflect our ever-changing society. So this means we need to actively seek um, input and partnerships with different communities who want to be reflected in those collections and we need to look at how we can best serve them. So we need greater visibility and awareness among the public so that we can create opportunities for these conversations. We also need to reach out to youth, uh, to indigenous communities, uh, to new Canadians and others that may traditionally have been underrepresented uh, in our collections and in fact in our users so that we can help enrich um, both our collections and services to be responsive to their interests and needs. Thanks, Leslie. And hearing both you and Frank speak, it's it's evident that there's not only these uh, seismic changes within the you know documentary heritage community, but also society itself and national libraries uh, play a, a crucial role in reflecting those uh, changes within its collections and, and engaging with its users. So, um, thank you for that. And. It really, I'd like to go um, in our next question uh, a little bit more pointedly, and I'll start with you, Leslie, in terms of, is there one innovation or achievement that you're most proud of that's happened at Library and Archives Canada since you've been with us? I would say the, the most recent achievement that I am incredibly proud of is the launch of our ebook, uh, Nations to Nations, Indigenous Voices at Libraries and Archives Canada. Um, this really is the first publication of its kind, and it features 28 essays by First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Nation authors. Um, we're especially um, thrilled that this ebook was showcased just yesterday um, at this year's Frankfurt Book Fair. And uh, we're hoping that uh, colleagues in, in Germany and around the world will have an opportunity to experience these Indigenous voices and learn more about the Indigenous nations and peoples in Canada. Thank you, Leslie. And Frank, from your perspective, one initiative or, or project that you're most proud of from the Dreadnought National Library? Yeah, well, one thing I'm proud of because we developed it together as part of our employer branding initiative is the value proposition for the German National Library. And a central sentence here is the German National Library an unexpectedly large variety of opportunities to contribute to something meaningful and lasting, linking cultural heritage with the digital future. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, this is, these are great. We have achievements uh, that have already happened. And I wonder, Frank, if you would like to provide insight in terms of an upcoming project or or collaboration or, or an initiative that'll cause a big, big change for your organization you haven't uh, mentioned already. Yeah, maybe not a project, but one of our strategic fields of action, uh, which is continuously developing our learning organization. This includes uh, new work philosophy, strategic IT management, overlay structures from an organizational perspective and diversity management. 
Thank you, Frank. And Leslie, from your perspective, any upcoming projects that you foresee will be a, a major change for Library North Coast Canada going forward? Well, I think I'd like to, to just mention that we are in the process of uh, developing a vision for 2030. Um, we have been working on this actually uh, for a little over a year, but the actual launch will just be in the spring of 2022. And I'm very excited that we will have a vision that takes us 10 years out and more uh, that will develop a roadmap so that we can all work together with uh, no, we'll have a common destination where um, both, both the public and our partners and our stakeholders and our team members will all share the same vision and will work together um, to help us achieve that roadmap and that we can align all of the work that goes on in terms of our building projects, in terms of our digitization, in terms of our collections development, in terms of our development of new services um, that will all come together to really help us bring our mandate alive and have it um, actually have the impact uh, on Canada and Canadian society that, that we would hope uh, it could. So I think Vision 2030. Thanks, Leslie, and big changes ahead for both uh, respective organizations, so thank you. Um, I'm thinking, uh, Leslie, if you'd like to expand on that in terms of changes, is there one piece of technology or innovation that you're really, really excited about in light of these changes that you mentioned uh, for Library and Archives Canada? Well, I think that at this moment in time, pretty well everyone in the world is very concerned about the environment, and we're very, very concerned about our future um, as, a, as a planet. <laughs> and um, recognizing that each of us has to do uh, our best to be able to look to a sustainable future. I am absolutely thrilled that, in fact, our two building projects are both uh, net carbon zero projects. And um, so highlighting our new preservation facility, Gatineau 2, um, it will be the first net carbon zero archival center in the Americas and it will be the first Government of Canada facility constructed to the net carbon zero standard. And um, as a national library, you know, we want to maintain our collections as long as possible. So we really need to make sure that our infrastructure is kind and supportive uh, to the environment. And um, so we were thrilled when uh, just a little over a year ago, the federal government announced that they would in fact fund um, the additional monies required to ensure that Adesoke, our uh, new building opening in 2025, 2026, will also be a net carbon zero building. We're also looking at other ways we can be sure that in fact we're conscientious about the environment. And I think what Frank has talked about around digital and accessibility and not requiring people to travel to our facilities, wonderful as they may be, is another way that we can support the environment. Thanks, Leslie. This is great news for uh, obviously the collections and our users and the environment, which is uh, not always easy, but very worthwhile. And Frank, I'm wondering uh, if you'd like to build on uh, a, a technology or innovation that you're excited about that you may have mentioned or alluded to earlier in our conversation today. Yeah, well, I'm particularly excited about the new uh, use of new methods of artificial intelligence for processing and analyzing text and metadata. And especially that those tools on a large scale are maintained and developed collaboratively, like uh, ANIF, which we are using and which was originally developed by the National Library of Finland. Um, we just started um, a new project as part of the federal government's national strategy for artificial intelligence, um, which is called automatic indexing system, content indexing of publications with AI. So we want to really tackle some of the yet unsolved challenges of this uh, machine learning uh, world and really try to um, create keywords from our national authority files out of, um, so to say, structured text of books and newspaper articles and things like that. So, um, and I, th I think what's really thrilling here is that we, we do this collaboratively. So um, this is with um, 
um, a lot of different research institutions in Germany. And um, yeah, I think this um, yeah, exemplifies, so to say, the digital turn um, that we only can uh, acquire collaboratively. No, thank you, Frank. There's a lot to unpack there, and it's really exciting uh, as well, the work that uh, your organization is endeavoring. And, and this leads me to my next question. I mean, we can't have this conversation without mentioning the ongoing pandemic. I mean, the great thing is we're here uh, together uh, in this format. Um, so I'm wondering, Frank, if you'd like to build on and sort of uh, other challenges that you see that, that don't include the pandemic that are facing your organization based on what you're saying with regards to some of the tools you've been talking about well, the biggest challenge uh, might really be to live that constant change uh, with the positive attitude and mindset I mentioned in the beginning of our dialogue. Uh, to really believe that we can shape the future together uh, towards becoming pragmatic, fault-tolerant, and fearless organizations as national libraries. I think, for me, this is really the biggest challenge. Thank you, Frank. Leslie, yourself, any challenges that you foresee that don't include the pandemic necessarily? Well, I might cheat here, but <laughs> Francesca won't call me on it, I hope. Um, I'd kind of like to focus in on, on two aspects that I think are really critical going forward. And, you know, one is this service transformation where we're going to be welcoming um, probably 10 times uh, the number of visitors as we move into our new facility. Uh, that we're then we're used to um, uh, providing service to, and I think that'll be quite. So the service transformation is going to be um, massive, and we really need to think about that not only in relation to the new facilities, but in relation to the digital presence. And that makes a great segue into the fact that our second priority really is digital optimization, and we really need to be able to have the digital infrastructure in place to support you know, our, our digital asset management. Um, right now we, we receive more analog materials than we do digital, but over the next few years, the digital is going to build up and be much larger scale and we'll continue to receive analog, but we need to be able to efficiently ingest, manage, preserve. We need to leverage AI as, as Frank mentioned to be able to um, uh, do that digital ingest without having to have human intervention um, at every or many step of the way. So I'm kind of excited to look at how we can come together around our service transformation and our digital optimization to uh, make sure that we're a modern national library that really uh, is able to respond to the needs of our, 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 um, our users. Thanks, Leslie. I don't think you're cheating. Actually, it's, it's a nice uh, you know, compliment to what Frank was saying. There's, there's a tools aspect, but there's also the mindset. So based on what you were saying, uh, there's also a mindset component there. And I mean, if you look at what we've been doing uh, over the last year together as an institution, I mean, this is our institution respectively. This has been a, a nice year-long collaboration where obviously our context where the German National Library and Library and Archives Canada may be a bit different, but there are definitely a lot of similarities in terms of what we were trying to achieve to meet the needs of our users. Uh, radically become a modern institution to serve those users and also embrace change while doing it together and because uh, we cannot do it alone. So um, this series is a, is a really nice tangible example of that. And I'd like to take a pause before we, we do our next question to uh, formalize this uh, relationship between the German National Library and Library and Archives Canada. I'm really happy to uh, to hear that we will be formalizing uh, this relationship in terms of an MOU. Um, to build upon this last year of, of conversation dialogue series that we have done and to maybe tackle some of those really exciting opportunities and, and challenges that you, Frank and Leslie, have mentioned. So through the magic of television, I will pass the, uh, the MOU here to both Frank and Leslie to sign in real time. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. I see, I see a pen. I see some furious <laughs> signatures <laughs> happening. And if you're ready, I'll take it back from you both. I'd like to thank you. Right. There he is. <laughs> and uh, again, um, in all sincerity, uh, I think this is a, is a great, uh, you know, a formal demonstration of, of the work that we've been doing together last year. And, and I'm really excited uh, to see what else we can do uh, going forward. Um, we've come to the last question of our uh, conversation. And 
again, collaboration is key. Uh, change is key. Uh, doing this together is another common theme. And I'm wondering, Frank, if you'd like to, you know, in light of this MOU now that we have signed uh, in real time, if, if you'd like to expand upon um, opportunities that you see that this, this MOU will uh, enable for both Library and Archives Canada and the German National Library to work together. Yeah, we're really happy uh, to renew and deepen our connection and cooperation that has already existed between our two institutions. But we see now with the digital transition that we have so many similarities and challenges that with this MOU, we lay a solid foundation on which we can build cooperation and professional, professional exchange in the future. And I'm really convinced from the experience so far from our conversations that this will be very fruitful relationship for the Library and Archives Canada, as well as the German National Library. Thank you, Frank. And uh, last word to you, Leslie. Yeah. Well, you know, I think as we worked on these four panels together, um, you know, we've really developed relationships. Um, there are many team members at Libraries and Archives Canada that have discovered um, colleagues at the German National Library that share so many interests, but even more importantly, where the German National Library may be ahead of us in certain areas and we can learn from their experience and maybe from some of their uh, mistakes that they thought, gee, if I could do that differently and we can benefit from that. And at the same time, I think there are other areas uh, that are complementary where um, we may have uh, expertise and best practice and, and developments that we can share so I think we've already had an extraordinary experience over the past year in, in developing uh, a, a relationship, which as Frank said, already existed, um, but has become much richer uh, during this, these recent um, months. And so uh, we're just excited to look at uh, continuing to develop uh, these relationships and uh, to continue to learn and to share our best practice. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Frank. I, I, I echo uh, just being luckily involved in the last two panel discussions. It's been quite a learning experience and, and an amazing experience to see what both institutions are doing. And I'm really pleased that uh, we're going to be going ahead uh, and continuing those discussions and those conversations. So I'd like to thank uh, Frank uh, from the National German Library for your time today. I'd like to thank Leslie as well. Uh, from Library and Archives Canada for your time. And I'd also like to thank, uh, Frank, your, your colleagues, your fellow colleagues at the National German Library who've helped us with the other panels that's happened this last year. It's been such a rich uh, experience. And I'd like to thank my colleagues at Library and Archives Canada as well, especially those who are behind the scenes and making this happen in real time. Um, and I'd lastly like to thank all the viewers here today, uh, whether you're at the Frankfurt Book Fair or you're at home. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And I hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, this conversation. And I'd like to wish you all uh, uh, a very good day and to take care of yourself. Danke. Thank you. Merci.